everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm here with Nick Garrison from Foolproof Brewery. Brewing. Look at this good stuff. You brought us some treats. It's Monday. It's beer time. All right. <laughs> well, it is always beer time for Absolutely. you, right? It is. Too cool. Often. It's too much. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about Foolproof. Sure. You guys are doing great. Thank you. You're big. You've been around for a couple years. Yeah, we're in our, uh, actually our fifth now. We just had our fourth year anniversary. It feels like we've been doing this a long time, but in the grand scheme of things, we, we haven't really. But uh, yeah, we're, we're up in Pawtucket. Um, we do tours of tasting there. We've expanded our distribution throughout New England, so not just people in Rhode Island are drinking our beer. We're getting it uh, all across the region. So. Yeah, so you just expanded distribution up into Maine just mm -hmm. not too long ago. So what is that like? Uh, like how much more are you producing? So it's going to be tough. It, it is. There's a lot of logistical and legal elements involved when you enter new markets. You have to kind of learn the laws and the registration process. You have to find the wholesale partners to go with. Um, but truthfully, we still do the vast majority of our business right here in our home state of Rhode Island. Uh, I followed by Massachusetts. Um, but yeah, most people are familiar with us here in the Ocean State. But it's very cool to drive up to a place like Vermont or Maine and see a can of Foolproof or a tap handle of ours uh, out at a bar. It's so fun when you go somewhere else and you're like, oh, that's a Rhode Island beer. That's what I want. We're here. trying to make people proud of the Rhode Island beer scene. Yeah. That's great. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, you brought some stuff and we're like, oh, yeah, it's not right to have an empty beer glass, right? Not. Yeah, It just absolutely. doesn't look right. <laughs> so um, I've been just reading about some of your beers. Mm -hmm. You always have fun, interesting stuff going Thank on. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. always some cool, fun stuff. So was it just this past month you had the, the chocolate oyster, like, what? It's yes. crazy. Like, yeah, we put some weird stuff in beer sometimes. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, that was our Chocolat, our Chocolate yeah. Oyster Style. It's kind of our Valentine's Day beer. We did a nice event there. And uh, we have a great space. It's a little hard to find. It's off Mineral Spring Ave in Pawtucket. But uh, if you come up there, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. We do tours. We do tastings. Last week, we had a live cellist play. So we cool. Yeah, thank you. We paired beers with the music. Uh, we have a comedy night, like live comedy and craft beer sampling at the brewery. That's this Friday. We have a donut and beer pairing coming up. So there's all this stuff going on. I recommend people go to foolproofbrewing.com. Check us out on social media. You'll, you'll get the inside scoop of all the events. All right. So let's talk about you are debuting something new Very here, exciting. right here. Yes. Go Love you heard it. here first. Here exactly. first. All right, let's talk about this. So you may notice in this lineup of cans, there's one that looks a little odd. Well, this one in the end actually doesn't have any beer in it. It's what's called the Pilot Can. Cool. Uh, and this is the pilot for our brand new IPA called The Grotto, which is actually hopefully, hopefully the plan will come out on Friday. And it'll start showing up at bars and liquor stores in Rhode Island and actually all over New England. So we, uh, putting out a new beer is like the most fun we get to have as a brewery, uh, and this beer in particular be fantastic. It's an India Pale Ale. Uh, it's very light in color. It's uh, unfiltered, very hoppy, aromatic. Uh, we put in a lot of hops in a process called dry hopping when we're adding them directly into the tank after oh, fermentation. Cool. And that gives it like this wonderful hop aroma and bouquet. And it's really kind of the style of beer everyone's looking for. So I would encourage people definitely come out next weekend or keep an eye out for the grotto. We'll be rolling out across uh, all of New England over the next few weeks. So are you guys, I'm going to hold this closer to the camera. I love this can. Thanks. This is gorgeous. Where do you get your designs? So Who designs this stuff? Uh, we have an immensely talented brand artist. Her yeah. name is Liz Weinberg. She's a good friend of mine, actually. And she's a RISD grad, too. So a nice Rhode Island connection there. And uh, my non -messed up finger. <laughs> our whole thing at Foolproof is like, treating beer as an experience and actually yeah. pairing the beers with these life experiences that people can relate to. So the grotto, uh, you know, it's kind of like this hidden paradise, hidden cave. So we like the idea of like a beer being your own hidden paradise. We're also on Grotto Avenue, so there's a connection there. With but they're the hard dress. So we just thought that name was a great fit and she did a fantastic job with the design on this can. So. Is this one going to stick around then? Is this one of the, the long-term ones? It is. It's a new year-round beer, um, and it, we just feel like it's going to be so popular. We want people to get it 12 months out of the year, not just you know seasonally. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited. So how long does it take you really to develop a beer that lasts? That's a good question. It's always a little nerve-wracking when we put out a new beer for the first time because you don't know if people are going to like it. I mean, we might love it, but... You're uh, like, this is awesome, and everybody's just like, no one it. <laughs> Well, I was talking about, like, in the industry, like, the definition of a good beer is one that sells, you yeah, know? Really? So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think, knock on wood, we've had pretty good luck, luck with all of the beers we brew. You know, usually, they're, they're very well received, so I feel very confident this is going to be a home run for us, but uh, it's a very organic experience in terms of developing the recipe, the name, the artwork, the style of the beer, and, you know, 
we tend to brew stuff that we like to drink and brew. We were kind of selfish in that respect, but uh, it seems to work out pretty well. Yeah, so. you seem to know what you're doing. I Sometimes. Mean, it's, <laughs> it's been around. So what is it? Like a, like a five-month concept? Like a two-month concept? Like how does it, I mean, what go, really goes into it? Well, there is a lot involved, particularly when you're putting it in a can in terms of all that proofing. Yeah. There's federal approvals involved with the government. Um, so I'd say on average, like in terms of the day, we want to make a new beer to it actually being canned and produced. You know, it's probably around four to five months. That doesn't seem too bad. It probably no. seems like it when you're going through it, but yeah, in terms yeah. of like making it finished and product, that doesn't seem It's good. doable. It's doable. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. All right. So, and you also have your, your, another project in the works called Forecast. What's yes. That? So uh, another kind of piece of innovation we're rolling out this year is uh, this really cool idea of a rotating beer. So like the can, the name of the beer is called Forecast, and, and that will stay the same, but what's inside will change. And the whole play is like, I mean, it's gorgeous outside today. It was snowing like a blizzard the other day. So in New England, we're pretty accustomed to radical changes happening, and this beer is kind of a play off that idea, and saying Forecast. So uh, we're hoping to roll out the first iteration of that sometime in April, and then three months later, it'll be a different beer in that can. And that kind of keeps the consumer interested because they want something new, something different every time they open a beer, and that's what Forecast is all about. That's so fun. Thank you. That's like, it's kind of like like one of those mystery lollipops. It is, you know, yeah. Wrapper, you, don't you, you don't know what you're going to get, but you're like, yeah, I totally want that one. Yeah. That's awesome. How fun is that? It's the meteorologist beer. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So what it goes into something like that where you just like, Let's do something fun and different or yeah i mean this industry is changing so much you really have to kind of be on your toes and, and be forward thinking about everything so this is something unlike any other beer project we launched before and it seems to really connect with with what the beer drinker wants and the beer drinker wants something new they want a new experience they want to try maybe a flavor or a style of beer that they're not accustomed to and forecast is kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit in terms of the styles of beer it won't just be an ipa you know i, I don't want to reel too much but it'll be yeah. like a very unique type of IPA or some kind of odd ingredient, which, you know, like the chocolate oyster stout, we're pretty accustomed to doing. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be a big hit. And where do you where do you get this information? You're like, this is what the customer wants. Are you getting it when people are coming in? Or are you getting it, do you do research? Or where is um, you, you just, I mean, you, you pick up a lot of it, just talking to customers, what you see out in the trade, you know, dealing with retailers and wholesalers, and of course the end consumer, and just listening to them. There's also, you know, just tons of stuff on social media, trade public indications, you know, posting analysis. At the end of the day, you don't really know. You know, there's a lot of luck involved in terms of like, we're gonna put something out and hope it does well, and you never know if it's gonna be like the next big thing or if it's gonna go down in flames. And that's what makes this job really fun, but really terrifying at the same time. Enough that you, enough fun that you've stuck with it yes, over the years. Yes, absolutely. It's beer at the end of the day, so, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So, uh, what has been some of the most interesting beer that you've made over the past couple of years? Um, I think, I mean, the, the chocolate oyster shot is right up it's there. So that's, I mean, that's just fascinating. Yeah, just like, some people are kind of freaked out by it, but it's really, it's really nice. Actually. Just that process that you do to to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I the peanut butter porter. Um, I think that raised my eyebrows when we first released it, but when people kind of shed some traditional thinking about what beer is or what beer can be um, that they open their minds a little bit and then they realize like this they're introduced this whole spectrum of flavors they never knew was out there so um, we've also like our raspberry IPA that was kind of last summer's hit Queen of the Odd which we'll be bringing back this year but that was that's good. that was that's also good. really unique too so that's good thank you um so when it comes to the seasonal versus the year-round mm -hmm. what how are you guys doing how are sales um, good. We're in what is historically the very slow part of the beer season, unfortunately. We're, we're very much in the weather business and beer. So, you know, after the holidays, Super Bowl's over, um, people have a lot of debt, P people are, tend to be drinking less beer, but you have an unse <clears throat> unseasonably warm day and that can really turn things around. So, typically we're busiest from Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's kind of peak season for beer. Huh. I so. Would, yeah, I guess if you're out mowing the yard, you want to have a cold beer when you're mowing the yeah, yard and, and sitting in the sun. You also think like Rhode Island too, right? You get folks coming to Newport, Narragansett, Block Island. We get that whole influx of tourism. The population of the state swells, and that changes uh, beer buying behavior as well. So, do you think um, do you think that really beer industry helps along with the economy and the tourism industry? Absolutely. I mean, a beer tourism is a thing, uh, mm -hmm. very much so. I mean, you you read about you know Colorado, Vermont. Northern California, Portland, Oregon, uh, Portland, Maine. Now, they, like these are places that people are, are traveling very long distances to go to try the local beer. It's something I think we're just starting to tap into in Rhode Island. And it's very exciting. And we have such 
a rich, amazing culinary history in this state, and beer is part of that. So uh, I think it's I think it's very exciting. It's really fun to be part of that. We're seeing more and more people come to our tap room who yeah. don't come to Rhode Island regularly, but they heard about us, and then they're getting a beer here. But then maybe they're going to Providence and they're having dinner somewhere, and they're getting a, a hotel room. And so you can see the kind of economic snowball that creates. So what do you think about the the Brewers Guild, the Isle Guild? They're coming into Pawtucket. Yeah, they're they're great guys. They're uh, actually right down the street from us, and uh, I think they brewed their first batch last week. Friday, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, our head brewer Steve popped over to kind of hang out with them during that process. So um, I think it's great. My hope is that uh, selfishly it brings even more people into Rhode Island and you know visiting them, drinking the beer they're making, but also then coming to Full Perth and drinking our stuff. So I. It's helping really solidify Pawtucket as a New England brewing hub, um, and it's just it's an honor to kind of be part of that that whole story. It's good to good yeah. to have some competition, but it's healthy competition and bring more people in. Yeah, that's very much what it's like in the beer industry. That's good. It's good to know. Uh, and you, like you said, you're having more and more events. I mean, I'm looking yes. at your event list. You're making it a space kind of a destination not mm -hmm. just beer but doing really different things and one of the reasons I reached out to you was for the Bakken beer which I thought was so cool Thank you, you. had that a cellist come and play yeah. yeah so how did the event go I, th I thought it was fantastic it was one of those events where we didn't sell tickets or anything like that so we were kind of like flying by the seat of our pants we didn't know how many who were gonna walk in the door but we ended up with over a hundred and it was amazing. We, you know, we shut down the pumps. We really tried to make the space as quiet as possible. We just, oop, we just let the uh, the cello do the. Uh, See, I'm not breaking things this time. <laughs> no, I'm like, moved, don't knock over the. That's beard. why I moved the full beard. <laughs> um, but the cellist was amazing, uh, and he just played, you know, three suites, and we paired each suite with with beer. And uh, we we had folks in there who had never heard of Foolproof, who weren't even necessarily beer drinkers, but they had a great time, and so it was cool for us to reach a group of people that way and it's an event I hope we can replicate again in the future. And you're doing beer and yoga, mm -hmm. you have like beer and donuts, <laughs> uh, like you have paint and pint nights which is huge. People are doing all these painting nights to so yes. go out like date nights or the girlfriends or whatever and you have like pint glass pint nights which looks so fun um, and I have a list of events. You have comedy craft night, Yep. Uh, comics craft yeah it's a tongue twister, <laughs> comics craft comedy there we go. That's you it, essentially yeah. get the gist. Of what <laughs> So are you looking to be more in an event space? Are you looking to get more people in the doors? Like what's the ultimate goal here? Well, we find when people come into the brewery and they drink the beer there and they have an experience, that is the single best marketing tool we have. So all we're trying to do is get more people in the door to make them more familiar with Foolproof so that when they go back home uh, and, and they're shopping at their local liquor store or they're going to their local bar or restaurant, they're seeing the brand and remembering that great time they had with us and then hopefully buying the beer. Um, and it's just back to everything we do is about beer as an experience. So it's really fun to create these unique experiences in our space that sort of sort of tie into our overall brand uh, as, it, as it is. And I was looking at a picture of the beer and yoga. It's like the yoga mats are in with <laughs> the, oh, where yeah. you brew the beer. We pack them in there. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's just a very cool surrounding too with all the stainless steel tanks around you. And uh, yeah, yoga and beer is, uh, we try to do it the second Wednesday of every month and we sell out just about every time. And it's, it's great. It's an it's a hour long yoga session followed by a beer tasting. And you just get to relax. It's, it's the best combo. I only go to the beer tasting part of it, but that's that's just. You gotta try the yoga. I know. I zen should. out. You probably need to zen out a little bit. I, I do need more relaxation. Well, with all this hard work you're doing, <laughs> at least you're coming up with different beers and releasing different beers. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, what are you kind of looking at in terms of long run here? So, you have the grotto that's coming out, mm -hmm. forecast coming out. So, what are your hopes for 2017 going into 2018? So, our hope is that these beers and like some of our other, uh, I guess, uh, more legacy brands are really going to keep us built busy through throughout the summer, uh, and then we'll restart the whole process. We'll be thinking about new beers for 2018. And we're also always looking at new markets, you know, new states we might want to go into um, and kind of tell the foolproof story. But uh, in the short term, we're really hoping Grotto is a huge success and uh, that we're going to be too busy making that to worry about anything else. <laughs> and then you'll be able to get some yoga and chill out. Yes, exactly. You need Hopefully. a lot of yoga to go with it. Great. Nick, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate it. We're going to, if you have any questions, uh, questions you can always go on their website and uh, um, I'm gonna take a picture of this so we can enjoy this beautiful design sorry there's nothing in it <laughs> no no that's no. probably good I would probably knock it over <laughs> like this all right so Nick Garrison from foolproof they are located in Pawtucket and have a ton of different events and activities like 
the like beer and yoga and donuts and beer. I mean, not quite as healthy, but equally no. fun. No, but then maybe you can just go take a jog after because you have like a you have like run too coming up. Yes, yes. Yeah, so all kinds of stuff. All right. Well, so great to meet you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Colin. And you'll let us know when the next round's coming out. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for having me.